Hello? Sorry, I just wanted to hear you scream. Get back here, I'm not done. Imagine the day they see you again, and you are just, well, better. Hello, it's day one of October and day one of Drawtober. For day one of my Drawtober prompt, it's mushrooms. And for day one, I didn't want to do anything too complicated. I just wanted to do something simple, calm, and comforting. So I drew up these squishy little mushrooms with a cute little snail sitting on top. And I had so much fun with this. I tried to stick to a color palette of green, yellow, and orange. I love this color palette. I think it looks very festive for October. Even if you don't like drawing in ink, I really think you should do Inktober. The prompts are cool and it's such a fun challenge to participate in. I never work in ink so I had a really rough go today. I accidentally smudged my entire page. But I had to make the mistake work because I was not going to redo my entire drawing. So then I intentionally smudged more. The effect came out kind of spidery so at least that's a win. And then I added a bit of color and I don't hate how it came out.
Este dibujo me tomó toda la noche. Empezamos con un boceto sencillito, de esos que no se ven como que te están a punto de traicionar. El problema fue que quise empezar por luces e ir bajando a sombras, pero no me acomodé, entonces hice una capa de puro café y luego di una capa de amarillo a todo el dibujo. Unas horas después, ahora sí tenía algo con que trabajar y añadir más colores. Quería un dibujo en tonos cálidos, así que usé un color carne, un rosa, un magenta y unos toques nada más en azul y un azul más oscuro para dar sombras. Destellos en naranja y un color negro al que tal vez ya debería jubilar. Con él marqué las sombras y el contorno, el cual repasé con plumón para poder hacer el fondo de acrílico. Aquí ya solo queda hacer toques finales y luces con los pasteles y hacer los destellos de las velas. Sellamos unas luces con corrector y detalles sobre verbios en dorado. Por favor, quítenme los lápices de color en la noche. Creo que este es de mis dibujos más adorables hasta el momento. Empecemos este dibujo robándonos esta charolita plateada, cuya forma vamos a calcar para que nos ayude como el marco del dibujo. Una vez listo el boceto, empezamos a tintar con pluma café. Usar tinta café en vez de negra nos va a ayudar a darle un look más envejecido. Quiero que este precioso y elegantísimo sapo tenga un look similar a las ilustraciones del periodo rococó. Me apoyo con los lápices de color y nuestro sapo ha quedado listo. Ahora con café voy a pintar todo el área que se quedó en blanco en la hoja y finalmente con este plumón cobre vamos a enmarcar nuestro precioso retrato del sapo. Ay, es que mírenlo con su vestidito. ¿Qué les pareció? Set the phases to run What got you to strut It's negative attention At best Call it nothing Maybe something a little bit, a little bit Maybe something It's all about ascension I guess Don't put me to rest And hand me your clothes Take a picture too I can see you Beers falling down at the party Saddest little baby in the room Fears tell me fears to get me started I can take a little gray hair In girl world, Halloween is the one night a year when a girl can dress like a total slut and no other girls can say anything about it. The hardcore girls just wear lingerie and some form of animal. Add a little bit of spice. Let's do some oogie boogie nails. Okay, I think you're really gonna love this Dollar Tree Halloween craft. Grab the gather, fall sign, and remove the pumpkin from the back. I use sandpaper to remove the word from the back, but you could probably skip this step if you don't have it. Next, paint your pumpkin. I went with classic orange, but you can paint it whatever color you'd like. Don't forget to paint a spooky little face. I drew a black line around all of the details just to make them stand out a bit. Next, cut a piece of paper to fit the size of the frame and glue the pumpkin back on. You can leave the sign like that, or you can add a little extra detail and make a spiderweb in front of it. I think this would be so much fun to pass out as gifts or maybe even play settings at parties. Let me know what you think in the comments and share for more Halloween crafts. Okay, this is the perfect Halloween craft for little kids to make. It's so easy. I hope you like this one. Start out by printing the Halloween cat printable that's available on my Patreon. Next, you get to color it in however you want with pens, markers, or crayons. When you're happy with how everything looks, carefully cut it out with some scissors. Fold and crease the dotted lines to make it look like a cat laying down. This is so cute. I love this part. Next, use some glue to glue the head down to the body. Line the head up to the edge where the legs start. Hold it together for a little bit so that it sticks. Next, curl the end of the tail and glue it to the back of the cat. Okay, you can leave it like this or you can add all of the little Halloween accessories that it comes with. Let me know what you think about this Halloween cat in the comments. Remember to like this post and share it with a friend. Happy Halloween! Vous dessinez et vous cherchez de nouvelles idées pour de l'inspiration, le mois d'octobre est fait pour vous. Je suis sûr que beaucoup d'entre vous sont déjà au courant, mais pour tous les autres, sachez que le mois d'octobre pour les artistes, ça s'appelle Linktober. 
Linktober, qu'est-ce que c'est C'est un challenge pour tous les artistes, amateurs ou professionnels qui s'étale sur l'intégralité du mois d'octobre. Et pour ce challenge, on propose tout simplement une liste de thèmes à respecter tous les jours. Et du coup, je vous mettrai une photo de la liste à la fin si vous voulez la screen. Pour ma part, je vais bien évidemment faire le challenge tous les jours avec vous sur la chaîne, mais je vais y rajouter un petit truc. Cette année, je ne vais pas faire Linktober, mais Linktober. J'ai inventé le nom, ou alors il existe déjà, mais je ne savais pas. Et... Euh, les artistes, le mois d'octobre, ça se passe bien Oui, fais l'innocent, fais l'innocent. T'as combien de jours de retard Vas-y, je t'écoute. Tu sais très bien de quoi je parle. Alors, ce que je te propose pour le jour numéro 7 qui a comme thème la goutte, c'est un petit tuto pour faire une goutte un peu réaliste mais très facilement, au cas où le cours d'histoire ou de maths serait un petit peu trop long à capter. Alors ce que tu vas commencer à faire comme tu peux le voir à l'image, c'est tout simplement colorier un carré avec ton crayon à papier. Crayon de bois, crayon gris, tu commences pas à me choper par le callback. Et tu vas ensuite venir estomper tout ce petit coloriage. Mouchoir, coton-tige, ça fait le taf. Après ça, tu vas gommer une forme arrondie dans ce carré gris pour venir ensuite retracer le contour de cette forme de manière un peu plus appuyée. Tu vas ensuite poser une ombre sur le côté de ce qui va bientôt ressembler à une goutte. Et ensuite, comme tout à l'heure, tu connais la musique, tu repasses un petit coup d'estompe. Même le doigt ça marche pour estomper d'ailleurs, c'est juste qu'après c'est un peu chiant, t'en as partout quoi. Après ça, du côté opposé à cette première ombre, tu vas en faire une beaucoup plus foncée. Et combiné avec une petite touche de reflet blanc, ta goutte va ressortir comme par magie. Donc ça c'est super, c'est une goutte. Une goutte de quoi Ah merde, c'est une goutte. Et oui les amis, car ici je vous rappelle qu'on ne fait pas le Inktober, mais bien le Ducktober. T'as quatre jeux de mots par rapport au canard Faltou um dia para começar o Inktober, então eu trouxe algumas dicas para te ajudar a finalizar esse desafio. Mas antes, para você que não sabe o que é o Inktober, é basicamente um desafio de desenhar por 31 dias seguidos. Que acontece todo ano no mês de outubro, por isso Inktober. E todo ano a gente tem uma lista de palavras com os temas de cada dia. Essa aqui é a de 2023. E se você não quiser seguir a lista oficial, não tem problema. Porque tem artistas que disponibilizam as próprias listas e eu vou estar seguindo essa daqui. Agora que você já sabe o que é o Inktober, vamos para as dicas. A primeira dica é faz alguns rascunhos com antecedência para você ir adiantando, porque são muitos desenhos, né? 31 dias seguidos. E se você não tem tanto tempo livre assim para desenhar, faz desenhos mais minimalistas, menores, menos detalhados. Porque se você quiser fazer a obra de arte da sua vida em todos os desenhos, não vai dar tempo. E a última dica, se você perder algum dos dias do desafio, não tem problema. Segue em frente, continua fazendo, porque o importante é que você participou. Let's make this Halloween skeleton look way more creepy. Thankfully, with a few simple techniques, we can make him look a lot better. First, we'll give it a freshly dug up look by spraying it with some dark brown spray paint and then wiping it away while it's still wet. This immediately makes it look less like fake plastic and more like he just crawled out of the grave. Before we did the same thing on his head, we cut out his old teeth and replaced them with these new cheap fake teeth and just hot glued them in. Next, we'll create some gooey flesh using barge contact cement. As we lift up the brush, we'll hit it with a blow dryer on low speed, which helps spread the glue out and makes a really cool webbing effect. From there, we'll lay down a thin layer of glue and dab it with some cotton balls to create some patchy, rotten skin. When the glue's dry, we gently brush liquid latex onto the webs and tap down the cotton to give it a great skin texture. Once it's cured, we'll paint it with some dark, fleshy tones to turn our boring plastic skeleton into a true undead nightmare. Follow Wicked Maker for more awesome Halloween tips.